It's 11 o'clock now though and it is time for Uncancelled where some of Britain's top personalities speak out on controversial issues without the fear of cancel culture which we know is sweeping the rest of the media. And today I'm joined by Impressionist and Britain's Got Talent star Francine Lewis to discuss why cancel culture is now ruining comedy. Francine says it is increasingly impossible to make risky, naughty or transgressive humour for fear of offending the woke mob. Very shortly, we're also going to be joined by the Scottish Comedian of the Year, Leo Kurse, who has himself experienced this. He was controversially banned from his venue at the Perth Fringe in Australia following allegations of transphobia, despite, wait for it, writing the material with a transgender woman he was dating. So we're going to speak to Leo shortly, but first, Francine, let me bring you into this, and it is so great to talk to you because I absolutely love your work. And, and I just read oh. this, this really powerful interview by Jennifer Saunders earlier in the day, who was talking about the fact that Absolutely Fabulous would not be able to be made today because the jokes would just be considered too edgy. Have you discovered similar things with your work? Definitely. I mean, an example when I was doing, first of all, it's so lovely to be speaking to you, Dan. Um, when I was on Britain's Got Talent, you were so amazing uh, supporting me. And we got Well, I think you're the best together. impressionist in the country. Hilarious. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, well, never underestimate the pricing. <laughs> Honestly, Dan, you're going to have to come to my engagement party with Carl, <laughs> Carl, whatever his name is. I'll oh, forget there's been too many. You know <laughs> she's my favourite. She's my favourite. But, 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 I mean, in all seriousness, though, when you're doing an impression now, like someone like Katie Price, do you have to think about all of these other issues are oh, what sort of what, what about her mental health what if she complains you know because you've had stars complain about your impressions i have and it's really weird because when i was doing i really really noticed the change when i did britain's got talent christmas special because when i'd written my scripts and um i'd given them to the producers they you know they saw them they really liked it and it was the night before re recording the show, they actually said, oh, we need to scrap all those jokes because they're not politically correct. We're, we're and, and what were those jokes about? Well, Gemma Collett, it was all about, it had to be about Christmas. So obviously the JC, do you know what I mean? I love me turkey, I love me Christmas pudding, do you know what I mean? But I wasn't allowed to make any weight references uh, to... Gemma Collins, I wasn't allowed to say the word drug, which was in part of um, Sharon Osbourne. You know what, Mrs. I want you to speak about Aussie. I mentioned drug and you know what they said, no. So um, they said no to that. Um, I had to change her last minute. I had to change the GC last minute. Then they, they said that I had to be careful with Cheryl Cole about you know, using references about um, not being able to speak uh, properly, <laughs> proper English. And it was just ridiculous. Give me a bit of your Cheryl Francine, because I love it. Go on. You know what? I couldn't believe it, but I couldn't do anything. I really couldn't. But I'm so happy to be here, because I love you, Dan. I really do. <laughs> but so, but, it, um, I mean, look, yeah, I and, and what's so and shocking all... about that, Francine, is that... I mean, I know the GC really well. She, she's a good friend and, and, and she talks about her weight all the time. She wouldn't have been offended. Likewise, Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl have a sense of humour too. And what you're telling me is so disturbing. You know, ITV, Britain's Got Talent, were essentially censoring comedy. And it's probably because they are so terrified of getting complaints. Yeah. They were. And, you know, it really ruined the whole buzz for me. Um, I didn't like the, the new stuff they'd written for me. It was, to me, it wasn't funny. 
and I just felt what I was doing was funny. I didn't. I don't think it would have offended anyone. Like you just said. I mean, funny enough, Gemma Collins is one of the people I do who actually really enjoys my um, impression of her. I mean, you know, there is other reality TV stars that have made comments or complained. And recently, I did a um, a sketch on Chloe Sims. I've always done Chloe Sims, and I've always used a bit of this for her teeth. And I just talk like this, and then I just do a laugh. <laughs> and I mean, most people love it, and the majority of the comments on TikTok were positive. But some were like, "You're a bully. You're taking the mic. Have you ever thought of her mental health?" And it's actually made me rethink my career now, Dan, because it doesn't make doing impressions fun anymore. Because to me, just standing there doing an impression isn't what. It's going to make people laugh, you know. Yeah, they might think, oh, my God, that's good. But if you're going out and doing a live show, you have to be funny. And you have to find things about that character. You know, when I'm doing Stacey Solomon, Stacey doesn't. She's not over the top like I do her. You know, she's quite now, nowadays, you know, very serious. But I still do as, oh, my God, I love it. I'm in jail. I still like her over the top. But that's what people want to see. And that's what's funny. It's not funny to watch her just talk like oh, yeah. this and like I can't wait to get married and it's going to be amazing do you know what I mean it's not funny and what though, a great so. compliment it's a great compliment to these celebrities that you would even consider them famous enough you know to do an, imperson an impersonation of and this is something front scene that we've seen in acting as well because essentially now you can only play a part of someone who is, you know, the same race as you, the same gender as you, the same sexuality as you, and doesn't it take away performance art? It really does, and it's really difficult because you can have a career spanning for like 20 years and you might just say one joke that offends somebody and it can be the end of you. Yeah. Uh, I am so careful about what I tweet. You know, I'm quite an opinionated person, but I'm so careful about mentioning religion, politics, mm. race, um, and it's made comedy now for all comedians really, really tough. And I just don't know how how this whole comedy industry is going to carry on because, I mean, even me, I thought, you know what, I feel like I need to change a career now. I don't think going out doing comedy. I, I, I can't do the stuff I want to do, even with my impressions. And I love doing impressions, but you know, what comes with impressions is, you know, for instance, when I do Billy Fairs, I love Billy Fairs, I love the Fair Sisters, but oh, she does talk like this, and oh, Nelly, no, but I know that has offended her, and, that, and it's sad that that's offended her, because I'm just Did, doing did she tell you? Me to, Oh, I've heard through people, yeah. No, obviously, I do her mum, so Because her mum talks a bit like this, and, yeah, she's a bit like, well, I suppose she's a bit like Janet Street Porter, who could go like this, who I know Janet's not a big fan of mine. <laughs> but you know what, Dan? It's so silly because the people I do, I absolutely love watching. Um, and, yeah, like you, I, I'm a massive fan of Katie Price, and I do think comedy is going to come to an end soon because oh, we can't do what... No, it's absolutely terrifying stuff. And, and thank you so much, Francine, because not only have you made me laugh tonight, you have made me think. Thank you. You're absolutely brilliant. Please don't give up, though, because you were so funny. I want to bring my panel into this now. Calvin Robinson, Daisy McAndrew and Kirsty Gallagher. I mean, Francine Lewis, honestly, she is the best impressionist mm, in the country. She is hilarious. absolutely incredible. How terrifying, Calvin, that she thinks She's actually going to have to give up her career mm. because people get so offended now by her impressions. It's mad, isn't it? So what if they do? What's wrong with being offended? It's actually a sign that we live in a privileged society that we can take offence at things that people say and nothing comes of it. It's our choice to be offended. And comedy should inf offend people. If That's how you get a laugh. That's how it's fun. Mm. Yeah, so don't you think we, we very often everyone. people aren't offended? Mm. It's faux mm. offence. Or offence on other people's behalf, Offence on other worse. people's behalf. And it's often the corporations, isn't it, Daisy? The broadcasters, I mean... Uh, how, what a shame that, that Britain's Got Talent and ITV has become so woke, you know, and we know ITV is woke now because look at what happened with Piers Morgan, mm. 
Look at how they, they acted over that complaint from Meghan. But I think you were absolutely spot on, Dan, when you said uh, to Francine that they would, would have been worried about the complaints to Ofcom because we all know that actually the whole point of those complaints isn't necessarily that Ofcom's going to come down you like a ton of bricks. It's that you're going to get splashed all over the newspapers. And so many Who's of... experienced that, Daisy? Well, exactly. <laughs> talking about? Exactly. God. Exactly. But, but the whole point... So, so often those pylons are completely orchestrated to create the front page story, I know. to create it's a story pathetic. that's, ne that's never pathetic. really if there. If you're complaining about one of Francine Lewis's hilarious gags, you need to get a life. Look, I want to bring in um, the Scottish comedian of the year, Leo Kirst, who has himself experienced this. Leo, this was so shocking to me. So you actually wrote a comedy sketch with a trans woman who I believe you were friends with or, or in a relationship with or something like that, but it, but it got you cancelled? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I was cancelled from, uh, well, from a, from a venue, um, not from the entire Fringe Festival, but, but over in uh, Perth in Australia. I was over there in 2019 doing, uh, doing the Fringe and uh, a clip from my show went, went viral. And uh, people, you know, misunderstood the intent behind it. They saw, you know, a straight white man talking about transgender issues and assumed that I must be being transphobic. And uh, they cancelled it. And in doing so, ironically, they, they cancelled, uh, you know, a marginalised transgender voice because I wrote it with my transgender ex-girlfriend. Um, so, yeah, the whole thing was, was a bit of a... That's you know, utterly mess. ridiculous. And so... Do, do you agree with, with Jennifer Saunders then, who, who says actually it's becoming quite hard now to do edgy humour at all? Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's not just the sort of high level cancellations, it's the sort of the ripples of self censorship that go out through the whole comedy community. So everybody's afraid of saying something that's, that's going to get them cancelled because it's, you know, if, you see it every day on, on Twitter. Um, sometimes it even happens in the clubs as well. You know, somebody just needs to shout racist and then you're smeared as a racist. There's going to be people who believe it. I mean, mm. uh, last year I was called, a, I was called a, a racist by a comedy community, comedy industry um, insider. And as a result of that, you know, even though she'd never met me, never spoken to me, as a result of that, I was, I was blacklisted from, from clubs uh, and, you know, it can have a real impact. So everybody's walking on, on eggshells mm making sure they don't say anything that could be offensive. And obviously that's not a good, uh, <laughs> that's not a good environment for, for yeah. creating, you know, the comedy that, that, is, that is going to be great. And, and is it because, Leo, you don't necessarily have the political views that are acceptable in the comedy industry? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, it's funny, people always say, so I'm, I consider myself, you know, a, a kind of right-wing comedian, um, but I'm just being honest. You know, nobody wants to pay tax. Nobody wants more government interference in their lives. You know, I'm just, you know, most comedians don't pay their tax. They stuff all that money they get from the, the cash-in-hand gigs. They stuff it under the mattress. Um, so, uh, like, you know, I'm just being, I'm just being honest when, it's, when yeah. I say I'm right-wing. But... Um, at the, at the moment, you know, wokeists say, oh, right-wing comedy punches down. And that's, that's nonsense. It's woke comedy that punches down. Wokeists are the elitists. And they're, they're the ones, you know, if you, if you watch any woke comedy, uh, they're the ones is, is having a go at people for not knowing their arbitrary, uh, permanently changing rules. Yeah, no, you're completely right. And what a fascinating insight. Uh, to the terrifying cancellation going on in the comedy world. But, Leo Kirst, you're certainly uncancelled on this show. You are absolutely brilliant, so we're going to have you back, OK? <laughs> we will, certainly will.